Hi, I'm Virginia, resident Jadar of narrators here at The Diffius. Some of you might already know John Carter, either from the books or from the film, but some of you might not yet have been introduced to the world of Barsoom and its inhabitants or strange creatures. So today we're going to give you a run through of everything you need to know to get started with John Carter. Barsoom, as it's known to its inhabitants, is the fourth planet from the Sun, known to us on Earth as Mars. It is a dying planet, and by the time we see it at the beginning of the novels, its great oceans have dried up, many civilizations have come and gone, leaving only huge dead sea bottoms, ruins of cities, hidden secrets, and a scattering of still surviving bastions of civilization. Barsoom is also home to a number of Martians and strange creatures that inhabit the surviving cities and roam the wastes and ruins in between. Life on Barsoom, according to an old myth, began on the Tree of Life in the Valley Door. This great valley is now a place where Martians take a pilgrimage along one of the last remaining rivers, the Is, to pass over into the afterlife. The firstborn are the oldest of the Martian races, though until later on in the novels they are believed by others to be from the nearby moon of Thuria. The firstborn are recognisable by their deep onyx skin, dark hair and beautiful sculpted physique. They are widely regarded as brilliant airship pilots, though feared due to their history for raiding and piracy. They live at the southern pole of Mars, hidden away in a place known as the Sea of Omin, the last underground ocean on the planet. The firstborn are the only race which still has access to aquatic technology, and few who ever see their hidden city return to tell of it. The White Martians are one of the other founding races of Barsoom, and in the novels we come across three distinct groups. The Oravar are the most ancient of the splinters of the White Martian race. When the oceans dried up and the atmosphere began to disappear, threatening to suffocate the planet, the Oravar built the Atmosphere Plant, a great building that produces Mars's artificial atmosphere. The Lotharians, who hid away in a valley to the south of Barsoom, developed strong psychic abilities greater than those of other Martians, to the point where they could create whole armies as real of themselves with only the power of their minds. The Holy Therns, white Martians who live in the Valley Door, serve the goddess Issus by luring pilgrims to their death. The Therns are known to be spies, informants and schemers, and are rarely trustworthy unless it is in their own interests. Unbeknownst to them, they are just pawns for the firstborn, who are the ones truly behind the deception that is the goddess Issus. The last of the more ancient Martian races is that of the Okar, or the Yellow Martians. They were once, like the firstborn, one of the dominant races on Barsoom, and their interbreeding with the firstborn and the Oravar gave birth to the first eggs that would hatch one of the youngest races on Barsoom, the Red Martians. In more recent history, few have ever seen a yellow Martian, many believing them nothing but myth. The Okar now reside in cities in the frozen north, protected by huge domes keeping in the heat. Other strange technologies developed with their exile, their own atmosphere plant, a huge magnetic tower used to crash any airships that dare move into their territory, and a whole army frozen in ice awaiting their next command. Like the other races before them, the Red Martians took on a humanoid appearance with deep copper-coloured skin and impressive physique. By far the youngest race on Barsoom, the Red Martians only knew the planet after its impressive oceans had dried and its most impressive cities fell to ruin. Unlike many others, they favour beauty in their homes and daily lives. They have some of the most successful cities upon Barsoom, most notably the twin cities of Lesser and Greater Helium. They have built large airship navies, known as some of the best to ever sail through the skies, and have impressive military prowess. The hordes of the Green Martians began to appear as the oceans receded. They are unlike the other Martian races, huge in height and bulk, sometimes 8 to 10 feet tall. They have double torsos and an extra set of arms, making them fearsome warriors, capable of brandishing anywhere between two and four weapons at once. Their faces don't resemble the humanoid features of the Red and White Martians, the Okar, or the Firstborn, instead having large bony tusks protruding from their jaws, elongated heads, and almost antenna-like appendages. Separating into hordes named after the ruined cities that they occupy, the Green Martians kill for sport and live for war. So that covered all of the main races of Barsoom, and now we're going to look at its customs. Few on Barsoom except the Red Martians care about beauty in their lives but almost all of them care about honour and tradition. 
There are strict codes regarding dueling. A warrior carrying a radium gun would never use it in a duel against someone wielding a sword for fear of being branded dishonourable. Assassins operate semi-legally. Rather than being shadows in the night, they are paid to challenge their targets to duel. The kidnapping of important royals and political figures to bring about peace or war through marriage is also prevalent. War among nations is ever present. The war between the red cities of Helium and Zadanga have been going on for years, and the constant conflicts between the green hordes and the red cities have been going on since both races appeared on the planet. Weapons such as radium guns are found alongside swords and spears, and warriors ride upon great six-legged lumbering beasts such as thoats. Barsoomian science is widely used, but rarely understood. Most technology is from civilizations long past, being repurposed but rarely repaired. Wounds which would be fatal can be healed with salves in a matter of days, and some of the brilliant few minds are capable of creating synthetic beings and performing brain transplants. Barsoom and John Carter of Mars present a world of pulpy science fantasy. The adventures to be had revolve around the themes of heroism, honour, the trappings of tradition, hidden secrets, strange science and the exploration of the unknown. You can find more lore and the tools to craft adventures on and explore Barsoom with our John Carter of Mars Adventures on the Dying World of Barsoom core rulebook. Make sure you subscribe to see more John Carter videos like this one. Let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video!